Hello all YouTubers, I'm The Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this July 2020 hurricane forecast for July 16th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, I would ask that every single one of you please smash that subscribe button and ring the bell notifications. Thank you guys so much for 600 subscribers. Let's get to our next goal of 700 subscribers and to our next long-term goal of the big 1,000. So please smash that subscribe button and ring the bell notifications as well as watching the whole video. Both of these things really do support my channel and, you know, watching the whole video, it's a win-win. You know, you, you get the best for the content and I get the watch time, which I really do need for my channel. And please also like and share this video. Thank you. Now, let's get on with today's video. Essentially today, this isn't necessarily a, might, you might be wondering, why isn't this called your 15th hurricane discussion? Well, I just did that three days ago, and that's taking a look, like, you know, more long-term over the next few months, a hurricane discussion now through the rest of the, you know, summer into the fall. Um, but this is just like a hurricane forecast for the rest of July, and I even made my own little forecast, so, so stick around for that. So I did make my own forecast of what, um, how many uh, tropical storms and hurricanes we could have uh, through the next two weeks, through the end of July here, and Kind of like taking a look over the next two weeks, kind of like midterm here, and uh, what we could be seeing for July. Now, obviously, a lot of this has to do with uh, what ENSO pattern are we in. We're not in the La Nina officially. This needle will be all the way over to the left if it was, but we're in what's called a La Nina watch, which means we definitely need to be on alert for the La Nina. And if you're wondering when my next hurricane discussion, my 15th hurricane discussion will be, that will be coming out probably over the next about, you know, two to four days or so, possibly. You usually like to do them every five or seven days. But this is a basically July 2020 hurricane forecast. And you can see that, again, La Nina Watch is definitely going to impact um, our tropical systems for the near future and for you know the distant future over the next few months. The Gulf and the, and the Northern Caribbean, as well as parts of Eastern Caribbean, we got some above average ocean temperatures. Um, even out of the tropical Atlantic, we're starting to see some building um, warming ocean water off the coast of Africa, which I just did a video about a tropical wave potentially forming off of there. If you want to check that out in the top right corner of your screen. Um, really, I just want to, you know, thank you guys for, you know, just 738 subscribers. I mean, that video is like, like, or me, like, you know, almost dozens of subs. And I want to thank you guys for that. So that video got a lot of views. So if you want to check that on top right corner of your screen, please do check it out. And you can see that for the, even the East coast as well, the Gulf stream, we'll talk about the North Atlantic, um, both areas. Okay. Could even see, so we got some, uh, two, three degrees Celsius above average, some ocean water. So. You know, things are starting to change. You know, we're starting to see a lot of building uh, warm ocean water. Now, it did have someone tell me, and I did notice this. It's been happening for about a year. And, and since I, you know, started looking at weather a few years ago, uh, CDAS does some, have some of a cool bias. So after this, I will be looking at another uh, sea surface temperature anomaly map to show you guys. But you can see off the coast of Africa in terms of actual ocean temperatures, starting to get into the 80s. Usually, tropical waves, though, form like right about here. Okay. And, all right, sometimes they may come off towards the north, sometimes they come off towards the south down here, towards the warmer water, but overall, they're kind of forming this here region, all right? But once they have, head out into the uh, western Atlantic, Gulf, Mexico, Caribbean, Bahamas, some very warm water getting in the mid to upper 80s now, even the Gulf Stream on the east coast here, uh, mid 80s in terms of ocean water, so some pretty, pretty warm ocean water here we'll be contending with. So here are the SST anomalies. This is for... Um, this actually issued yesterday. Usually, you see issues about every day, uh, and you can see that our, our building La Nina that we have, we're starting to head towards the La Nina, right there in the equator along the Pacific Ocean. But I do want to zoom in on a couple of regions. First region I want to zoom in on is Alaska. For what? Um, what's going to be happening is because of that building warm ocean water, we actually watch this for the winter time, and what happens is the jet stream rises and it falls. But this actually might have to do with hurricanes too, because if this does happen, sometimes tropical systems can spin off these fronts. Maybe the, the front drops or the jet stream drops into the Gulf of Mexico, or the, we can have a front, that come, a stationary front over the Gulf of Mexico and, or the East Coast. And that's how tropical systems can form um, during the months of July. Sometimes it happens. So if this area of warm ocean water, extremely warm ocean water, were to drive this jet stream down and then drape a front over the east, maybe we could have a little spin up or two, tropical spin up or two along the East Coast. And you'll see that in some of the modeling later. That we could even have something like that happening. And when we look up the coast of Africa, again, this also says some warm ocean water 
um, definitely as well as for the Gulf of Mexico, for the Caribbean, just by the Bahamas there, or the East Coast, all areas pretty much in that warm ocean water. And that's going to really drive the rest of July here in terms of our hurricane season. Now, how about Gulf of Mexico? Over a half a degree, even 0.6 degrees above average, we see we'll be on an upward trend. Um, you can see we were a lot better, though, April and May, late April, early May. We were really up there. Uh, we started to drop below. We dropped below average for the first time in a long time. We got right back up to average, and now we're just above average towards our ocean water here for the Gulf of Mexico. How about the Caribbean? Uh, the Caribbean is another spot where we kind of dropped a little bit, but we're still overall, for the, some spots will be warmer than this, some spots will be colder than this, but overall, the Caribbean is 0.2 degrees above average still, so above average water for the Caribbean, that's another key factor as well. And it's not just the ocean water, we'll be looking at other factors as well. Um, when we look at the tropical Atlantic, we've been on a real uproar recently. Um, but obviously, up and down trends like this are going to continue to happen. So, I take this with a grain of salt here. But still, we went from 0.2 degrees below average to 0.3 degrees above average in not too long. I mean, maybe about 24 hours, maybe 36 hours. So, it didn't take too long for that to happen. Um, but you can see up and down trends like this always happen. It, like, this is the East Chalk Atlantic out by coast of Africa, uh, near the Azores, the Cape Verde Islands, all areas there. Now, for July, where do storms usually track? We're going to start to see happening is I actually, we've had, if you see my recent uh, tropical videos, you've seen we had a tropical disturbance form out here by the National Hurricane Center, but it never really developed into a tropical depression or a storm. But tropical disturbance that can form by the island. They can drift through the Caribbean, go out into the Gulf of Mexico. They can drift through the north, northeastern corner of the Caribbean, go through the Bahamas, and even up the East Coast. All right. These are all definitely possible tracks. Um, but you can see the likely, the likely tracks, um, by the by Antigua, Antigua Barbuda here, by the um, Lesser Antilles, uh, Gulf of Mexico in that blue area, as well as the East Coast. So these areas are where tracks are more likely for the month of July. Um, whereas, you know, the rest of the ocean, usually we don't see tracks there as often, but we can still see tracks happen. It's always the first time for everything. Um, and again, in terms of in terms of our, like how often do we see chocolate systems and hurricanes, July, July, we're right about, we're right about here. All right, this is kind of like where we are. We're just after July 10th here, and we're going to start to see uh, up, uproar in activity. This is typically what happens climatologically is what we call it. Now, September is the peak month. Really, the actual time frame is late August to, to early October. Um, September is the really the month that we see the most um, chocolate, chocolate activity. But if you want to be exact, the act, climatologically, the most active day is September 10th. Climatologically, that's where like, the peak, the mountain peaks. In terms of hurricanes and tropical storms, as well as just hurricanes as well, both both of these peak in um, in September 10th. But overall, we're, we're starting to see kind of an upward curve. It goes up a lot. The mountain gets a lot steeper, meaning we're going to start to see some more tropical activity. Potentially, climatology is what climatologically is what happens through July through August. And we'll be kind of take a look at the modeling now and see exactly what will play out because that's what happens usually. And if this is the modeling. So here's the GFS model or CFS, I should say. Um, and obviously, this, this is an average of 48 forecasts, so definitely blending a lot of activity in here. When you look at 16th, July 16th through July 23rd, you can see that most of the Western Atlantic down through South America, we have some sinking air. This is what this is, sinking air motion in that orange and red. Green motion is that rising air, that convective air that can really get those storms going. But I want you to notice that out by Africa here, we see, we're going to see a lot of rising air motion out by Africa. So tropical activity that could form. And you can see over on the left side of your screen, there's, there's Africa as well. So maybe we could even see some lot of tropical waves form over Africa and then drift over the ocean. All right, but then what happens there? Does the sinking air motion take over? Does the sinking air back off? That's what we're, that we could potentially be seeing here. Um, taking it through end of July, you can see an area of really dark green forms by Ethiopia there and uh, in the eastern parts of Africa. But it really is a huge green area. Out, out in Africa and the Middle East, and that, that means a lot of rising air motion. So watch out. Your your typical thunderstorms for a place like India, for Africa, your typical thunderstorms can really be significant because of that rising air motion. But if Africa can have that green air continue, that rising air motion, then we can see some more convective activity develop from Africa and drift into the Atlantic, and we get to see how it develops from there. Now, how about the CANSIPS model? What do they think? Well, this is just for the, the whole month of July. That, the CFS, I did like a weekly analysis more so. This is kind of a on a month basis for so the whole month of July here. Uh, and you can see again, off the coast of Africa, more convective activity. But overall, the Atlantic is just about average in terms of our rising or seeking air. Nothing too extreme. We have a little area of 
Peach, maybe so some slightly, maybe it could be trending slightly downward, maybe some sinking or motion, but very, very little. Overall, the Atlantic is pretty much average in that department, but that could always change. Now, when we look at the total precipitable water, we're going to be watching these waves of precipitable water, and I'll be taking, again, taking this through the end of July. And as you can see, we're going to see these waves, all right? Obviously, here comes wave number one. I'm not saying it's actually a tropical wave, but there's one, there's one wave here. We actually see a strong low pressure system off northern Africa with 998 millibars of pressure, which is pretty strong, all right? And then there comes another wave. We got a wave here. We got another wave starting to form out here. So these areas of moisture. But look at this. This is what I told you about earlier. Here's that low that could be breaking off of a cold front on the east coast. But it does have a lot of dry air seem to be going into it. So we'll watch that low there. But, but focusing out towards Africa here, you see that we have, and maybe another surface low develops right here. We got a nice little counterclockwise rotation. Another tropical wave coming off of Africa. Look, looks kind of potent here. So July 29th, July 30th, July 31st. We still see some waves of, you know, potentially waves of moisture. Some, and then they drift over this warm Atlantic like this. Eh, it's not exactly a good combination for us, but for the tropical systems, we're gonna be having a lot of fun here. The conditions continue to play out like this. How about the Canadian model? What is the Canadian model thing? That was a GFS model. Um, let's look at the Canadian model now. And as you can see, again, here comes one wave of moisture making its way off the coast of Africa. We see some really intense areas of moisture, and they eventually develop over Africa and break out over the Atlantic. We get to watch closer to home too. Don't forget closer to home development in, during July. Some moisture throughout the Gulf and the Caribbean by the Bahamas. Um, we already got some a lot of heat instability there, so any thunderstorms that develop could potentially be pretty significant. But you got to watch all these little batches of darker green and moisture. We got another surface slow that the GFS and the GEM seem to agree on here during July 26. So possibly some, maybe a surface slow developing, maybe another tropical wave, maybe another tropical system. But before I go any further, I wanted to show you guys my forecast for July 2020, my hurricane forecast for July 2020. So this is my July 2020 hurricane forecast. Obviously, I'm tropical activity through the rest of July over the next day, pretty much exactly two weeks. Um, I think there could be anywhere from potentially two to five name storms, zero to one hurricanes. We could have a hurricane developing, um, maybe two, but it's, it's going to be hard to come by. Depending on the tropical activity and the sink, rising air motion that we have, I don't think we're going to have too much rising air, but I think we could certainly have a hurricane, possibly two, uh, maybe July. I think the end of July, maybe a hurricane could develop. Um, in terms of major hurricanes, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident in that it will probably be a zero. But watch out. Very end of July, even through August, September, we have had major hurricanes before. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying that I don't think it looks likely that for the rest of July we're going to have this. But once you head towards August, September, things are definitely going to flip around. But nothing, I mean... Nothing says this is below average activity, all right? In a seasonal average, again, we see 12 nay storms, six hurricanes, three major hurricanes. But in terms of the rest of July, um, those are your numbers right there. Two to five name storms, maybe one hurricane, possibly two, and probably zero major hurricanes. Now let's take a look at that cyclonic vorticity, that cyclonic energy, because we know that the moisture can come off of Africa here all at once, but can it really get together? Can the moisture and the energy really get its act together as it moves over the tropical Atlantic? And here's a little spinning area of energy coming off the coast of Africa here um, in a few days, about July 21st here, 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, but as you can see, multiple waves of energy will make their way off of Africa. And we got to watch these throughout July because any of, these, any of these, they may not look good now, but the modeling could really intensify them later. Here's another strong one coming off the coast of Africa um, as we head towards July 26th. But maybe a high pressure system here could steer these tropical systems, or tropical waves, I should say, right through uh, the tropical Atlantic here. So there's another spiraling area of energy making its way, and then we have another one coming here, but this is the morning of August 1st. But this takes you right through the end of July here, and it really does show that we could have multiple waves of energy making their way off the coast of Africa, and how far do they get? That all depends. Um, we can also have activity that breaks off of northern South America, and a piece of energy could even drift into the Caribbean. Sometimes it drifts into the Eastern Pacific, but waves of energy can break off of North and South America, drift right into the Caribbean Gulf, and maybe form a tropical system. So that we got to watch. Even though July that we start to see development out by Africa, we still have to watch close to home for development at any time here. It can always happen. Um, let's look at the GEM model and see what they think here. So that was a GFS, obviously, last time. And again, GEM model here seems to think that we could have a, another particularly strong area of uh, cyclonic energy right here. 
All right, but it looks rather small. Maybe like a more, maybe it's an elongated tropical wave and it's all one bunch. This is the morning of July 22nd. Um, but here's like a kind of like a cluster here, maybe like a little cluster of storms. You got another cluster of storms out by Africa as well. So all these little, all these little things we gotta keep our eyes on because it's not gonna show you next with the potentially low wind shear that we might have in this region. All right, that that could be bad news because we can develop we could develop something out of pretty much nothing. Uh, conditions kind of like a severe thunderstorm, you know. Conditions can really develop out of nowhere sometimes. Um, we can see tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa because thunderstorms blossom every day in parts of Africa, just like they do in the southeast during the summer. So they're gonna have to watch too. Now, looking at the wind shear anomalies going through the rest of July, starting with July 16th through July 21st. Again, as I show you guys in my hurricane discussion videos. The northern the Caribbean as well as the eastern tropical Atlantic 10 20 25 knots of shear below average all right even as we head through the end of July here let me actually go right here you see at the northeast now below average wind shear as well as the again tropical Atlantic it's gonna be average to slightly below average in terms of wind shear which is honestly pro development so a lot of factors go towards potentially some uh, hurricanes or even tropical systems during July um, now let's look at the gem model here and again starting with that area of blue of our tropical Atlantic might fade out a little bit as we head towards the end of July but still the Caribbean parts of each tropical Atlantic has could see some average to below average wind shear which obviously favors development so just take this into consideration I'm sure I'll, I'll hope to make an August video just like this except obviously for August hurricane forecast so stick around for that and also stick around for my 15th hurricane discussion in a couple days or a few days so thank you guys for watching today's video I am the weather dude signing off till next time catch you guys next video